I mean, what's the catalyst to sort of get us out of this log, log jam, in your opinion, Austin? And, and Larry, same question uh, as well. I mean, is there a catalyst on the horizon that you think will loosen things up? Or is it just time? Boy, I, I, I don't know. I, you, I, I think if you, looked, if you look in the middle of a recession, you know there's not an immediate catalyst. You just got to work through that. We're not in that position yet, but in, a, in several of these regions of the world, we're close. And, you know, in places like Brazil or emerging markets, we're, we're in something even worse. And I think they just, they got a lot of overcapacity they're going to need to work through. So do you think yeah. the U.S. avoids recession this year, or do you think that we go into recession? Uh, because that's the debate out there, I guess. And I feel like just recently, Maybe there was a little bit of a sentiment change, but maybe not. What, where are you on that in terms of recession in the U.S.? I don't know where Larry is. I certainly hope we don't. I feel like we're bumping along at this kind of 2 to 2.5% two growth rate. Yeah. But uh, truly, I think if China has the hardest of hard landings, they're the second biggest economy in the world. It's not really realistic that we wouldn't have a global recession if China goes down that, that hard. And, and some people say we're talking about growth of like 3% in China, Larry. I know that they just said they've got a target of 65 to 7%, but I don't know that people believe that. Well, they, they will officially hit their official target. Uh, that's the way things go in China. <laughs> because they said they well, would, and they will. Because they, right, they, they, they'd they had to run a, play, a country, yeah. at least statistically. No, I, I think uh, I'm a little bit softer on the uh, economy than, than Austin. I think it's going to be more like a 1.5% economy, and uh, there's a chance we have a recession, but the odds are, you know, maybe only 40% or so. And as to how we get out of it, I think uh, Austin and I probably agree. It's a matter of structural reform. Uh, and, and low interest rates buy you time, but they don't force the people to make structural reform. We have excess capacity globally. All zero rates do is allow the excess capacity to linger longer and longer and longer. So, so we are not solving our problems uh, like doing things. I got to like be careful if Larry today. keeps saying he agrees with me, they're going to come <laughs> after me. So I, yeah. whatever, whatever he said, I got to be against it. Okay. So what, what about the structural reform that, that you're talking about then, Larry? I mean, what kind of fiscal reform do you both think is required at this moment in time? The Federal Reserve, we know, has been the only game in town in terms of stimulus now going on eight years. So what, what do you think is going to be the important fiscal move that perhaps the next president will oversee? Well, it's not just fiscal. You know, I think we've been focused on quantities too long, and we should start focusing on qualities. Uh, you know, and in my book, I point out just how badly the money is being spent. It's very, very wasteful. We're not getting, you know, the bang for the buck we need. So and particularly on the regulatory side, we have now regulated the banks into a situation where they really can't increase lending. We've uh, put up all kinds of rules and restrictions. You know, we even have a higher reserve requirement now for vault cash. Yeah. I mean, what is the risk in the cash sitting in your vault? Why do we need excess reserves for it? There's a kind of, uh, you know, we're really in la-la land when it comes to regulation, and I think we have to begin to wind that back. That's going to be the key to getting the global economy moving. Well, again. how, how uh, significant are negative interest rates at this point? I mean, Austin, you know, the Bank of Japan lowers. You've got five central banks right now uh, that have negative interest rates. I mean, that's an experiment that's never happened before. And there's a reason why it never happened before is people <laughs> said it's not that great an idea. Yeah. Now, if you thought we, we, we took rates down from, say, 400 basis points to zero, and it didn't cure the problem. They're coming up with innovative ways to, to how could we cut it another 25 basis points into negative. If you think another 25 basis points is going to solve the problem, then I think you got to explain why didn't the first 400 basis points solve the problem? Yeah, so, so uh, bottom line, now, you don't think the I ECB then, I mean, then, the, then you have to not love what the ECB did this morning. No, look, the, the root of the problem facing Europe is that they've got a massive internal imbalance where Germany's had high productivity growth and Southern Europe's had very slow productivity growth. And they're basically just saying, well, maybe if we drive the euro down for everybody enough, we could just export our problems to the United States because our stuff will become so cheap yeah. that we could start growing again. And I don't think that that will work. All right, real quick, final, final comment here. Larry, your book is called Conspiracies of the Ruling Class. Um, I don't know. It's, it sounded uh, uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking of what's happening right now with the GOP. The, 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 the GOP pushing back on Donald Trump. Would you, is that a fair analysis? Well, I, th I think a lot of people uh, are. I think uh, you're having a natural political fight. You know, in the end, the voters are the ones who are going to decide who is the Republican nominee. Uh, that's the way it's working out. Mr. Trump is getting about 35 percent of the Republican vote. Uh, no surprise, there are a lot of people out there who don't want him out. Uh, the Republicans don't have superdelegates. So the ruling class, if you want to will, within the Republican Party, really is no power. In the end, the person who wins the primaries is going to be the Republican nominee. Simple as that. All right. We'll be watching the contest. Austin Goolsby, Larry Lindsay, good to see you both, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And Larry's book, Conspiracies of the Ruling Class. We